Good morning and welcome to Morning Moments. I'm so glad that you came and joined me this morning. Today I have our special guest today, uh, uh, author and pastor from Yorktown, uh, Virginia, just up the road from us a little ways, not too far on the other side of the tunnel, Rob Shepard. Welcome, Rob. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Now, the, the name may sound familiar because uh, Rob's father has been my guest twice, uh, Robert Shepard. So, and uh, he's, he's agreed to, Rob has agreed to be on my show today and talk about his newest book. And I just love the title. I, I got I to know more about it called Kill the Jerk. So Rob, <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me on. So tell me about the title of the book and what, what about the book Killed the Jerk? So. Yeah, yeah. So I obviously picked the title to grab people's attention um, to get them to, to pull it off the shelf. But um, there is some substance to, to this title and, and a reason for it. Um, and it really comes back to the honeymoon period that um, psychology tells us that as humans, we all go through this honeymoon phase. And the honeymoon phase could be anything. It could be a job. It could be a friendship. Um, it is obviously dating, uh, which leads to marriage, but on average, somewhere between the time we meet someone and two years, we exit the honeymoon phase. And what happens in the honeymoon phase is we're on our best behavior. We want the other person to like us, or we want to do, we want the boss to like us if it's a new job. And so we only allow them to see the good parts of us. But then once we get out of the honeymoon phase, we lose the fear of, of losing that job or being rejected. We're no longer afraid that they're going to leave us. And when that happens, we start to take them for granted. And so this is when we start slacking at the job. It's when we stop checking in with our friends. It's when we take our spouse for granted. And um, that is the, the jerk. And we all have this inner jerk inside of us that, um, that we have to fight against. And with Jesus's help, we can, we can kill the jerk. So th that being familiar with each other, that's, uh, it's real easy to fall into that, isn't it? With, yeah. uh, with relationships, isn't it? Oh yeah. Yeah. It's, it's so easy. And, um, I mean, and we, and we all do it like, um, you know, even kids, psychologists have, have shared that like children tend to be on their best behavior for a teacher or for a babysitter. When they get around their parent, they, they, their natural self comes out. And so they'll even be worse behaved or more whiny or, um, you know, more ornery to their parents because they know my parents love me. And so they get, the parents get the worst of them. And like, how messed up is that, that, the people closest to us see the worst and, and, and we save the best for people we're trying to win over or new people. Yeah. I hear, I hear parents telling me that when they go over somebody's house, they pick up and they do the chores and they do things and they go, why don't you do that when you're at our house? Yeah. At home? Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. It's because how we're wired, we're all broken creatures. And how do, how do you break those, uh, those terrible habits of taking people for granted? Yeah, well, and that, that's a lot of what I spend time in the book going over on on how to how do you actually kill the jerk and how do you have healthy healthy relationships. Um, for me, and this won't surprise anyone because I'm a pastor, but for me, it really does start with Jesus. That there's nothing else in my life that asks me to die to myself. Everything else is always saying, you know, do what feels good or do what makes you happy. Um, Jesus is the only thing that comes and says, no, you know what. Um, you need to die to yourself, that not all your desires are good. And um, the only way I know how to have healthy relationships is to uh, give other people what Jesus has given me. And so it starts with, it starts with Jesus. You know, it's amazing that you said that the last, I think, three or four out of the last two, two weeks when I've done interviews, I've had people talking about dying daily and how important that is yeah. just to, to, to die to self, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it's so it's the, the thing that stinks about it is we never get good at dying self and it's not a one-time thing. You, you may do it one time, but then, you know, the very next day that selfishness comes back and that's why Jesus said, you got to die daily. Um, I, I, uh, one of my favorite sayings that I, I say a lot is, uh, when, when, uh, surrender is your reasonable service. You can expect great, great things from God. So yeah. uh, we just need to, on a continuous basis, basis, be in a, in a spirit of surrender to what God has for us. That's right. Yeah. hundred percent. And I, I think that when we are in that spirit of surrender, 
the reason good things happen is because we get out of our way. The, the biggest obstacle we face is leading ourselves. And we don't have healthy relationships because we constantly are pointing at other people and wanting them to change and wanting them to, to stop doing something. But the truth is we all have some mess that we need God to, to, to do some work on. Now, you've also been a pastor at, at uh, uh, Next Level Church for nine years now. Isn't that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I planted the church nine years ago. And, um, and that's in Yorktown. If somebody's close by and wants to visit you, is that correct? It is. Yep, yep. It's in Yorktown, right on the border of Yorktown, Hampton, but it's in Yorktown. Okay. And um, uh, I know to, today we've been talking about Kill the Jerk, but you've, you've wrote a couple other books as well in the past, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. My, my first book is titled, Even If You Were Perfect, Someone Would Crucify You. And it is uh, about um, uh, learning how to stop being a people pleaser. And uh, my second book is titled You Misspelled Christian. And it's about uh, really bringing heaven to earth and, and representing Jesus and, and, and what he wants for us as Christians. There's really, uh, uh, there's more than just making a decision to follow Christ. There's the the discipline it takes to grow. And I think that's where some, sometimes people get stalled out in their growth and just, sure. uh, just attend church. I think that's good enough just to attend, but God expects us more, uh, more th of us than just, uh, just to come to church. Right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I mean, going to church is great, but um, you know, Jesus didn't die for us to stay the same. Um, and so uh, going to the church is, is, you know, where we get the inspiration and the fellowship, but it's the relationship with Jesus that allows us to, to experience life change and, and the spiritual fruit that he talks about. Yeah. God loves us enough to accept us the way that we are, but loves us enough to not to let us stay there. And That's right. uh, there's a, there's a lot of uh, movement that needs to take place in our, in our growth and our, in our life as well, doesn't it? That's right. Yep. Yeah. Well, Robert, what I'm going to do, or uh, uh, Rob, I should say, what I'm going to do, Rob, is put the links down in Facebook uh, on right. the comment section, the links to your books, your church, and also how they could get a hold of you. Maybe visit for those that's local, visit you at your church, uh, pick up your books, uh, and how to get how to even contact you would be great. And uh, one of the things I always ask my viewers to do and i think this is real real important is that when you think of rob when you think of uh even the even the title kill the jerk maybe maybe you're thinking of a jerk in your life and you think oh they're a jerk wait kill the jerk that means i'm supposed to be pray for rob right now so yeah. <laughs> uh, whatever it takes to have remember to pray for rob i, I want to encourage you to pray for him because oh, the you. more we could pray for each other and, and pray for my guest and also pray for, for the body of Christ, the more they could do. And uh, it's reaching out and, and, and that, that world of prayer all over, not only Virginia, where we live, but all over the, the nation and the world. So uh, yeah, uh, Rob, is there any, any closing thoughts that you have for us today? Uh, no, I, I greatly appreciate you uh, having me on and, um, I appreciate anyone that listens to this purchasing the book. Um, I often say that 100% of the proceeds go to needy children, my own. Uh, I have I have <laughs> twins that are 10 years old, and so uh, everything goes towards their college education and and uh, providing for 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 my family. And so um, any support you can give, we'd appreciate it. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And, uh, and thank you for, for being my guest today. And, and for the rest of you, thank you for joining me and uh, keep coming back for some more morning moments.